seven to nothing. Welcome back to War Memorial Stadium, everybody. Mike Patrick, Mike Godfrey, great to have you with us. This game, five seconds in, was all Arkansas. Downhill from that point on for Auburn. Uh, the opening kickoff, Robert Baker's going to field it. He works up the field and hits hit, coughs the ball up. And from that point on, Arkansas has just been on a sky-high mission. Barry Lunny rolls out to the right. We'll find Eubanks, Sampson Eubanks in the end zone for the touchdown. And as you look at the halftime statistics, look at time of possession right here for Auburn. Six minutes, 54 seconds, rush yardage, 38 rushing yards. That's been uh, the two keys for Arkansas, keeping that offense off the field and not allowing them to run the football. And Arkansas will get the ball as we start the second half. Kevin Gentle will kick off. Nichols and Johnson are deep. Nichols is a 10. Near the 25-yard line. Let's get down to Mike Adamley, Mike. Well, Mike, talking to the Arkansas trainers, they think, they think that Barry Lunny may have broken his nose. They're not quite sure, and they won't be able to tell for certain until they take x-rays. But one thing's for certain, he is back on the field, and if you notice closely on a close-up, he is wearing one of those Band-Aid strips that have become very fashionable called Breathe Right, and that's to open up the nasal passages. One of the things, if you've ever broken your nose before, it is mighty tough to breathe. And Mike, I don't think that Band-Aid's gonna help very much. I don't care how good it is. <laughs> you break your nose, you can't breathe. Madre Hill gets maybe one. Not only did Barry Lunny get a broken nose, but in the first half, he was on target. Here to Anthony Lucas for a touchdown. Then here on the option to the right, making people miss. Then here is where he got hit late in the game. First half, scrambling, gets tackled late. Just a tough, tough player, Barry Lunny. The injured player for Auburn is Terry Solomon, number 44, the junior. And Mike, he is being attended to. This first five minutes is critical for Auburn. If they can't get anything going this first five minutes, you might as well call the tower and get the airplane fueled up because this one's over. But the first five minutes, you, I'm sure Terry Bowden addressed his team and told them the, that, that they need to get some fire in them and somebody needs to make some plays at halftime. He's for something to happen here in the first five minutes. We'll check on Terry Solomon's condition when we come back after this. How did Plymouth Voyager get to be the best overall value in minivans? It all starts here. Use clever ideas like cab forward design, build in loads of safety, and exclusive easy out roller seats. Make it roomier, quieter, and offer the only driver's side sliding door. Then make it the most affordable. Plymouth Voyager, starting at 17.5. Get a great Voyager lease price right here, right now. See your Plymouth dealer. Mother Boyle and son Tim demonstrate their Columbia Parker's radial sleeves. And zip out liner. The Columbia Interchange System adapts to any outdoor situation. They'll never get the copier fixed before the meeting. It's handled. If your office equipment ever breaks down, no matter where you are in the business world, remember, nobody responds like Danka. Only Danka offers copiers, fax machines, and digital systems with this world-class commitment to service. How'd you get here so fast? I took a few shortcuts. Danka. World-class products, world-class service. Good news for Auburn as Terry Solomon was able to get off the field without assistance. He's been replaced by Andre Miller. The bad news is they're still down 27 nothing. and haven't been able to do anything offensively. And defensively, they haven't stopped Arkansas all night long. Second and 10 for the Hogs from their own 25. Running again, the short set. And goes out to the diminutive J.J. Meadows. 
Yards after the catch for J.J. Meadows are important. He's a small receiver, not a big target, just a little quick three-step hitch route against Dale McGee. Now look at the yardage after the catch. A quick acceleration after he catches the football. And McGee, a great cover guy. You see the respect he has for Meadows' speed with the pad he's giving him. Third and two. Thought better of the toss and is dragged out of bounds. Madre Hill had run out of room. There was no sense giving him the pitch. Mostella made the tackle. Now, Auburn looks to me a little bit uh, quicker on defense right now in this series. Playing a little harder. Charles Rose, number 31, able to get over to the option. Well, there may not be any paint on the Auburn locker room after a couple of halftime speeches. Hey, Danny Ford made a good move here. He's asking the referee to come over and at least check it out before you say it's fourth down. They were kind of quick saying it was fourth down. He wants a uh, measurement. If Arkansas does have to kick it away, it will be their first punt of the night and actually the first possession on which they did not score. Come back. It was a good idea to ask for a measure of weapon. That's close. danny has got good eyesight. He saw all the way across the field. He said, hey, we're a little closer than that. We need to look at this. What's the first thing the fans did was say, go, go. But Danny already has the punt team out there, Matt Waite. He's averaging more than 40 yards a kick. They can say, go, go all they want. He <laughs> said, no, no. <laughs> punt this football. We've got a nice little healthy lead up there and uh, let's see what Auburn's going to do on offense. Good, good series by Auburn on defense. Robert Baker is back to take the punt. He's averaging over 11 yards of return waiting at his own 25. And they could really use a big play out of their special teams here. Down 27 nothing early third quarter. Punt. Baker driven back to his 17. And again, great coverage by Arkansas special team. Bill Carson, the snapper, the first man down after a punt of 49. They covered it like it was a 30-yard kick, a return of only four. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday at 12.30. Illinois and Iowa collide. Then at 7, Texas Tech against Texas. And you can catch all the action on College Game Day and the scoreboard shows. It's one of those strange years in college football. A lot of surprises. This is one of them. Arkansas leading 27 nothing. Knicks goes to the shotgun. Throw short and complete to Robert Baker. Mike, one thing you look for is that if your quarterback and your offense, and it's not the quarterback's fault, but if your offense is struggling, sometimes you might want to go with your second-team quarterback. That's Damian Craig, number 16. Very exciting player. Second and six. Nick Strode has the first down. Willie Gauthier, and he's stopped by Tracy Cantlow. Well, the best defensive lineman for Arkansas is Junior Soley, number 90. And you make sure you block him on pass protection. Shannon Robique, the center, is going to work on him. And both guards, so they get a three-on-one on Junior Soley. But that's because Arkansas and Joe Lee Dunn was dropping into coverage. They'll bring the sink here any minute. First and ten. Here it comes. Go say again. Break three. Midfield for Willie Gauthier. When Come you have an Gauthier. offense, you just keep trying to change up on the Auburn offense. Joe Lee Dunn now blitzes. He's bringing Vincent Bradford, number 42, and Mark Smith, number 44. Good blocking by the offensive line of Auburn. One of the reasons the Arkansas defense is better is they are in tremendous shape. Most of the players lost 15, 20 pounds for this year. Plus, they haven't been on the field much in this game. Well, they haven't. Nick, 20 at time. Throws complete to Bailey. 
Bailey shakes the tackle, and there's a little spark in Auburn's offense and defense in the second half. Well, the first five minutes is going to tell you whether or not to get the plane oiled up and gassed up and everything else. Terry Box challenged his football team. And this is a team that's used to winning. Harold Morrow is on the field. He normally comes in when they go to four wideouts. Nick's under pressure, hit just as he threw. And the pressure being provided by Stephen Conley, who had two huge plays at the beginning of the game, the leading sack man in the conference. Plays the open side in. He always plays the split inside. His speed is his, is his biggest asset. Just about getting to Patrick Nix as he throws the football. Well, gee, somebody might want to block him. Victor Riley just turned and looked the other way. He gave the Olay block. So he just say Olay and go get him. Patrick Nix will say something else. Nix with a short step goes to Coach Day again. And Coach Day running hard goes inside the Arkansas 20 yard line. Mark Smith knocked him out of bounds. What Auburn is doing right now is just taking the little short five-yard passes, but the catch, making the catch, and Willie Gauthier's making good yardage after it because you're isolated on the outside when the blitz comes one-on-one. -on -one. So Patrick Nix doing a good job of picking the open receiver. And you can expect Auburn to be in this kind of offensive set the rest of the game. Bad pass that time by Nix as he short hops one out to the sideline. And for Tyrese Williams. If you had looked at this ball game tonight, and we talked about tempo at the beginning of the game, and figured that Stephen Davis was not going to be a factor in this game. But Arkansas took him out early because they scored so quickly that it became a passing game for Auburn. Second and ten. Stephen Davis is limited to three carries, 23 yards. This one will go down near the five-yard line. Another completion to Gaucher, and boy, Cantlope was really yelling at one of the officials. I think he got hit late, Mike, and, and he thought he got hit, but when the ball was down, and uh, you always tell your players, don't count your money out there, and you know, you wait till you hear the whistle, and then break down, be ready to get hit. Now on first and goal, Davis checks in in Arkansas. May not have had the proper people on the field for this place, uh, this part of the field, and they call a timeout on first and goal from the five, back in a moment. Alex, it's Paul. What do you hear from Wall Street on the offshore project? Uh, I don't know. You're hoping for something fresh, huh? Yeah. Well, I've got a proposal. You mean First Union? Yeah. Okay, tell me more. Well, they know the risks, and their plan for getting the capital protects us if the market moves against us. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No kidding. We're gonna nail this one. Right. Tons of interior space, comfortably contoured seating, and a great stereo. The Plymouth Neon sedan is a huge kick for cruising. While the Plymouth Neon Espresso Coupe's 132 horsepower engine and fully independent suspension make it a real kick in the passing lane. Plymouth Neon Coupe or sedan, it's never middle of the road. $99.95 for starters, $12.7 nicely equipped. Get a great Neon lease price right here, right now. Don't pass it up. See your Plymouth dealer today. You're my agent. You have to do something about this. My face is on the cup with a duck. Well, I'm allergic to ducks. Well, what about Bugs Bunny? He's cool. What? Emmett Smith has Bugs? He's just a running back. Now at McDonald's, get a free Looney Plays to go cup when you supersize any extra value meal. The NFL's Emmett Smith with Bugs, Barry Sanders with Taz, Bledsoe with Wiley, and Marino with Daffy on new to go cups. How'd I get on a McDonald's cup with Marino? Oh, agent. I'm allergic to dolphins. Have you had your break today? The final Southwest Conference Championship is up for grabs. Texas Tech versus Texas. Next Saturday at 7, only on ESPN. Auburn trying to break the shutout down 27 to nothing. And in their goal line situation, they have inserted quarterback Damian Craig, the sophomore, who is perfect in this situation in the last four games. Well, he's a good athlete, and any time he pitches the ball, he'll come out the backside. You gotta make sure you got one or two on him because he's got so much speed down here inside the 10. And Steven Davis is back in there as the deep man in the arm. He'll get the toss. Davis, touchdown Auburn!
A little bit more emotion now this offense just a little. Something that was sadly lacking in the first half, but they have come out pumped up here for the third quarter. And good Nick's team. first man out to congratulate Craig. Yeah, good team play. Patrick Nix with a good drive, gets him inside the five. Damian Craig comes in and finishes it off, pitching the ball to Stephen Davis. Hawkins, who has hit 27-29 this year in the point after department. Knocks this one straight through, and Auburn with 11.54 to go third quarter, finally gets on the board. They're down 27-7, and now it will be up to their defense. Well, when you run the toss sweep, you can see Stephen Davis. He's coming downhill, and Victor Riley, who missed a block on pass protection a little bit ago, got a nice block on that run. Patrick Nix being a team player that he is, that's what you want out of your seniors. Now, that's what you want out of your guys on the sideline and on the field. You want them to compete. Patrick Nix is competing. When you're on the road, you count on your leadership. When you're on the field leadership. You need it badly. Very impressive drive for Auburn as they go 79 yards in nine plays. Gentle will kick off the Nichols and Marius Johnson. And there's the Patrick Nix on defense. Anthony Harris, the senior linebacker, he needs to give the same kind of momentum and confidence to his defensive counterparts. As a coach, do you tell your defense, now we need a turnover, boys, go get it? We just got, you just got to make things happen now. You can't sit back and uh, wait. You got to make it happen now. I'm sure Wayne Hall is going to come after Barry Lunny a little bit. Nichols. To the 29. Let's go to Mike Adamley. Mike? You know, some people were looking at uh, Damian Craig replacing Patrick Nix as a quarterback controversy. It's really just another way to get a talented player in the game. Bowden looks at it this way. Patrick Nix is our number one quarterback. Damian is our number one short yardage quarterback. We talked to Pat last night. You're right, Mike Gottfried. He's a competitor, and he'd love to be in the game, but even he admits that Damian is the better runner, the bigger threat, and what's good for the team is good for Pat. Well, and you're looking at next year's quarterback also. So uh, he gets good game experience in those situations, Mike. And you can't argue with 10 for 10, can you? Short cut. J.J. making things happen on the outside of about the 33. Del McGee makes another tackle. And Danny Ford and Rocky Felker, the offensive coordinator, know that they cannot get real complacent in this offense. They've got to keep it open. J.J. Metters with a catch. Del McGee working on it. He's going to see him in his sleep tonight. The little receiver just making moves all the time. They gain four on first down. And now they go back to Madre Hill. And Hill waited for by Brumbaugh. Shannon Suttle gave him some help. This does not look like the Auburn team no. on the first half. Football is an emotional ball. It's, it's an emotional game. You've got to play emotionally all the time. And Auburn now on defense. And Danny Ford knows it. I mean, when you're on the sideline, you can see how it's changing a little bit here. Auburn playing a little bit stronger, a little bit uh, quicker on the field, uh, a little bit more momentum. And uh, they just need to shut them down here on third down for the punt. They'll go with their four wide receiver package. Third and six, first down. Caught by Eubanks. Eubanks to the 30, down to the 25, hanging out of the football inside the 25. Great run after the catch by Anthony Eubanks. He goes 43 yards. Great throw by the runner. What made the play, Mike, was good protection. Oh, you're going to get a curl route down the down the middle of the football field by Anthony Eubanks. But watch the pass protection. There's the in route, Eubanks, and then a missed tackle by Marcavius Houston, number 25. And then they just try to strip him, Del McGee, number 24. But Eubanks holds on to the football, and a big play by Barry Lunny. First down from the Auburn 24. Arkansas trying to answer right back. He'll get three down to the 21. Shannon Suttle with another tackle from his left end spot. 
Rocky Felker didn't get conservative. Third down, threw the ball down the field to Anthony Eubanks, and, and they know they just need to keep this crowd and to keep the offense moving. Metters checks back into the lineup. Clock ticking down to 924 to go third quarter. That's the biggest ally of Arkansas. Rocky Felker with a headset making some great calls tonight offensively. Lunny, play action fake on the roll, throws back in complete. Good coverage back there in the secondary. Melton was back there. Andre Miller was applying pressure to the pass intended for Eubanks. He's had a big game for this team. Good ball handling by Barry Lunny on this play. He's going to fake to the right to Madre Hill. Now comes outside, gets good pressure from Andre Miller, number 95, but with good speed, just looking, constantly looking for the open receiver. And that play action works because Madre Hill has been so successful. You're right, He's so successful running the football that uh, Arkansas's got every phase of their offense working. Speaking of successful, Eubanks seven catches for a career-high 96 yards. Third and six. Pressure, and Lenny goes down. Once again, Mark Smith has had three big plays in this game, and that's the third sack for the Auburn defense. He's a talented junior college transfer that uh, really made a good move on the tackle Carlos Showers to get inside and sack Barry Lunny. And both of their right defensive ends are transferred from Heinz Community College in Mississippi. Russ Brown, number 60, missing the block. So that sets up a field goal attempt. It will be a 44-yard try for Lotteret. Got plenty of distance, and it's good. We may look back on that field goal and say what a big kick that was. Matches his career long, 43 yards, 30 to seven, Arkansas. I'm Terry Garner with Lee Pontiac and Crestview, Florida, where we believe in doing business the right way. Friendly service, good quality, and fair prices. Just take a look at these. Right now at Lee Pontiac and Crestview, everything is reduced and ready to sell. You won't find a better place for Buick Skylark, Centuries, and Regal. So come see us and take a test drive at Lee Pontiac and Crestview. Remember, folks, you may drive a little, but you'll save a lot. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Oh, nice. My grandfather told me stories about this guy. <laughs> hey, looking The thing I like most about that guy is what he didn't say. <laughs> who the hell is that? That was my girlfriend in Honolulu. I don't know who the hell that was. Uh, Joey's team. Second Mr. Smooth. Look at that single bar, Joe. Hey, Joe. I like it. I don't care what Berman says about you. <laughs> 30-7, Arkansas, and Lotteret set to kick off after what is now a officially a 44-yard field goal, a career long, would have been good from 53 or 54. Really crushed it. And gets the lead back to 23. Baker at the three. Short of the 20. Arkansas special teams have been special tonight. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike, this will take a couple of plays, but the best finish of the day. Southern Miss down five against East Carolina. Final minute. Keith Graham, 19 yards to Donald Cunningham. They go for two and miss. So Southern Miss led by one. More to come. Stand by. All right, Mike, you have me intrigued now. Hardly wait. Sounds like an onside kick in our future, doesn't it? Nick's back in there at quarterback as they go with the four wides and Morrow is the running back. In 
complete over the middle. Back to Mike Tirico for the payoff. All right, here is part two. Chad Holcomb, as East Carolina drives down the field. 44-yard field goal. A fake with seven seconds left because he had missed from 35 and 37 earlier. Pass interference. One second left. One chance for the field goal from 29 yards. Holcomb kicks the game winner. East Carolina wins by two, and they're five and three. And they may be the best team in the Big East this year, even though they're not in it. Complete to Willie Gauthier. It was a gutsy call, the fake field goal, and uh, it's a big win for East Carolina. That was that Southern Miss. Auburn getting some movement here in the second half. Third and six. Nix in the flat to Morrow. Across the 30, dives all the way out to the 33-yard line. It's a first down for the Tigers. When Auburn goes to the four receivers, Harold Morrow comes in the ballgame. You see he's wearing a cast on his, uh, uh, on his arm. Still makes the catch. He was used as a fullback last year, an excellent receiver. Ball thrown by Patrick Nix. See the cast on his left arm, makes the catch, and uh, I believe a penalty is going to be called on Auburn holding. That really hurts the Tigers. Instead of a first down, it's going to be third and long. And you saw Morrow make that last catch to tuck it into his body, and that probably the cast prevents him from catching the ball with his hands very well. You can figure Joe Lee done the defensive coordinator is going to try to heat up Patrick Nix right here. Third and 17. And Auburn needs to do something you would think on his possession from now on. Jim Washburn, the defensive line coach, urging, urging on Junior Soli get to the quarterback. Bailey and Baker, the wide receivers to the near side. Nick looks the other way. Gauthier makes the catch out at the 33. They got the first down. Philip Hayes makes the stop, but a clutch throw by Patrick Nix. Watch right here, the middle guard, number 90. He's going to drop off in the protection. We talked about Joe Lee Dunn, always blitzing, but here, only a three-man rush and eight players in coverage still able to get the ball to Willie Gauthier for the first down. Just good change up by Joey Dunn. Nick with a short set throws intended for Baker, but Marcus Adair was right in his face. You don't always have to get to the quarterback. No. The threat of it is there when you're playing a defense by Joe Lee Dunn discussion about the flag and we're not sure what they're talking to Arkansas Del Delco making the call as the defensive captain we had a substitute infraction the man did not enter inside the numbers therefore it's illegal it to kill. It's gonna be and what that means you have to come all the way in you can't just step on the field and stay outside the numbers because that would be a deceptive practice. No more lonely end stuff. You know, the guy's coming off the bench and taking off down the field. Nick's 8 out of 12, nearly 100 yards in this half. That's after he was ineffective in the first two quarters. Second and 10 after they declined the penalty. Gauthier has become the guy he wants to throw to. He said the Knicks will take off. Gauthier tried to get him a block. He got out to the 39. They need to reach the 43 for the first down. Mark Smith made the tackle. Score updates at 10.30 and 50 after the hour. Big play here, third and four. Auburn needs to keep this drive alive. They hit a third and 17. There go Shea's been the guy. He's been able to get two on third down. Looks that way, and it's intercepted. Tracy Cantwell knew the same thing we did. Willie Gosset was the man he wanted to go to, and Cantwell broke on the ball and got his second.
second interception of the season and the fourth turnover in this game. They can go to the well sometimes one time too often, and Joe Lee Dunn knew that they would go to Willie Gauthier. Tracy Cantaloupe, number 21, is going to break on this pass. Patrick Nix looking to Willie Gauthier to pick up the first down. Ball thrown too far inside. Tracy Cantaloupe with the interception. Junior Soli with good pressure. Number 90, you're going to see him as they twist inside, just getting his hands in the face of Patrick Nix. Madre Hill. Martavius Houston makes the tackle. And Arkansas with a chance to put it away right here. 11 turnovers, plus 11, and that leads the Southeastern Conference. Boy, if you're plus 11, you're going to win a lot of games. And you know, it's interesting. They lost Joe Kynes to Georgia, who's a very good defensive coordinator. Bring in Joe Lee Dunn, and uh, they just haven't missed a beat on defense here. Second and six. Madre Hill with 138 yards on 29 carries. Running under pressure. What a big second half Mark Smith has had. Four sacks for Auburn's defense. And Smith has two of them. He runs so well. Even though he took the fake just on a step or two, he was able to redirect, come back down the line of scrimmage, and make the play. Good speed. May have got a little bit of the face mask also. Got enough to spin the head around and then grab the jersey. Guess no harm, no foul. Well, tell that's a running. It was his head that was in there. Plus, that nose is inside. Yes, bro. <laughs> oh, is it ever. Thirds, too. Play action by Lunny. Scrambles out of the pocket and finally goes down at the 44-yard line. That was nose man Jimmy Brumbaugh getting the tackle. And Arkansas will send on the punt team. But if nothing else, it killed three or four minutes on the clock after they took it away on the interception. Mike, you talked about the earlier big win over Alabama. Barry Lunny threw the pass to J.J. Meadows, and we talked about it last night to, to Barry Lunny, and uh, we'll, we'll cover it here after the punt. Wade, who got off a good one the first time, was kicked to Baker. He'll probably be trying to pooch this one. High end over end. Baker signals fair catch, makes it at the 12. That's a nice kick by Wade. Only 33 yards, but no return. Game versus Alabama. Here was the last play. Watch number one, J.J. Metters. Now, a lot of people didn't think he made this catch, and I asked Barry Lunny last night. I said, did he make the catch? He says, only J.J. will ever know. <laughs> well, it says in the record books, he made the catch. Really looked there like he had his hands under it and cradled it to his chest. Patrick Nix in at quarterback with 4.25 to go third quarter. His Auburn Tigers down by 23. Their title hopes are evaporated. Davis. Across the 25 to about the 26. Cantlope and Hayes makes the, make the tackle. That's a pretty good play call at that point. Pretty good draw play. Stephen Davis has looked strong the few times he's run the football night, but this is no criticism on Terry Bowden because he got into a ball game where he had to score and he had to abandon the run fairly early in this ball game. They just didn't have the football in the first half. And Auburn has only run the ball 10 times all night long. Nix in the flat. A tremendous catch by Morrow. Really picked it off the grass tops, and Philip Hayes made the tackle. The way he's catching the football, he may have to put uh, the cast on receivers. And he just caught this one off the grass. Second down, five. Patrick Nix with a low throw. Oh. Right off the ground. But oh. that's in the rule book. Bouncing. That's, that's a completion, too. Short hop it like this gal. Go to Gaucher again. Up near the 40-yard line. It'll be another first down. Vincent Bradford, the linebacker, was on the tackle. Well, it's about time something went right for Auburn if they got a break. It's been that kind of night. 
11 catches go stay 139 yards. Got a Fort Walton Beach floor. Nick with time. Nice catch inside the 40 yard line. Eric Lowe, he's out of Lake Worth, Florida. And Terry Bowden has really gone to the state of Florida where the speed lives to get his receiver. A lot of times uh, his dad uh, will call him on some different recruits that they're not going to take at Florida State. And uh, Terry be just glad to oblige father to take some of those good players. May get to the point he's taking some dad doesn't want him to. Go Shea down to the 25-yard line. Auburn's offensive line's doing a better job here in pass protection. That was a full blitz by the linebackers, Mark Smith and Vincent Bradford. Watch this Auburn line, coached by Rick Trickett. Just pick this blitz up very well, gives Patrick Nix time for the completion. And the shotgun helps a lot too, doesn't it, Mike? The ball gets, you get a better look and you're back there already. You don't have to step back. You get good view. You're already where you want to throw the ball from. 3.02 to go third period. Auburn driving again. Nick floats one for Gaucher in the end zone. Incomplete. Nice coverage by Cantlope. Who would not let him get behind him. And you, we just talked about pass protection, but I believe Stephen Conley gets through here and hits Patrick Nix just before he threw the football. Good pressure that time by the senior defensive end, Stephen Conley. Second and ten. Draw play, Davis. Oh, and he had room and lost his balance. Had Robeek out there to block for him and stumble down to the 23-yard line. Conley may have been the man who got a hand well, on him. Looked like they had a twist on inside, and C.J. McLean came through and may have got a hand on him also. You'll see a twist coming from the defensive line. I believe it's number 43 is going to come through and just get a piece right there. Oh, you're right, 94. Stephen Conley. And he may have got him with his foot. I should have trusted your eyes. Yeah, oh, okay. You never miss. And Nick has to use a timeout on third and seven. 2.22 to go third quarter. Let's go to Mike Adamley. Michael, what do you have then? You know, Steve Conley has been playing great of late. He's the kind of player you like to have at defensive end. And athleticism that he's blessed with, which runs in the family. Let's take you back to 1992, the Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. Steven's brother Mike, an Arkansas grad, wins the gold medal in the triple jump with a leap of 59 feet, 7 and a half inches. You know, Steve came to Arkansas to run track. And his brother, actually, Mike, convinced him that he ought to try out for football. He was that good of an athlete. Mike, I still haven't figured out how they do that triple jump. And neither have I. <laughs> when I tried it, I got about three and a half feet total. Trip, stumble, and fall. That's, that's my triple jump. That's it. That's perfect. And Mike, uh, they were talking. We were talking to Danny Ford last night. He was talking about the track program at Arkansas and the coaching. And uh, he said, you want to come and look at somebody who can coach now. Come and look at that track program. Where track athletes have gone to the football field time and time again over the uh, course of the year. And most of them have become much better football players. When they first started to use track people, they were guys who had speed and no football skills whatsoever. Third and seven. The Arkansas fans come to their feet. Ball spotted at the Hogs, 23. Morrill is back there with Nick. Morrow and deflect, nothing doing. They had it defense perfectly. The ball came loose, but they're saying it's down. And it was Del Delco who had man-to-man -man responsibility with Morrow. So right, Mike, it, when you blitz, you man up, and number three, Del Delco, had Morrow out of the backfield from the start of the play. And that ball may have come loose before a knee went down, too. And Auburn's going to have to go for it. Nix wants to play. Play clock is running. It's down to 12. Fourth and 13. Nix.
Nicks with time. Throws. Goes Terry. Has it at the 14 yard line. First down. Good nice pass. Good question again. Again, they blitz. Auburn's offensive line picks it up. Patrick Nix has a long time to throw the ball. Willie Gaucher knows where the sticks are at. He's able to get the one foot in bounds for the first down. Gaucher, 13 catches for 166 yards. Both of those statistics, he has nearly half of the season's total in this game. Nix, quarterback draw. Patrick Nix, touchdown. Got a good block from Eric Lowe as wide receiver number eight. This play should work, right? Because Arkansas had a blitz on right in the face of the draw, and Patrick Nix ran right by the linebackers. They're going to go for two to try to cut it to 15. If they do get it, it would be 30 to 15 to win. They would need two more touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Davis will check back into the game. Ball spotted at the three. Play clock is down to seven. They've got a hustle. Nix directing traffic. Low won't move, and they have to use the timeout. Nix was pointing to Low, saying, you've got to come over to the other side. I wanted trips right, and Low didn't move. And that's a very critical timeout that they may need at the end of this game. Mike, I'm not sure on that touchdown whether that was a quarterback draw or he just made that move because he saw the blitz. Vincent Bradford and Mark Smith were on the blitz. Both the linebackers, you're going to see number 44, number 42, Mark Smith coming with a blitz, picked up very well, but they had a great call on it. Missed tackle. Patrick Nix picks up a good block from Eric Lowe, number eight. Sometimes it works out. And it's a great call by Joe Lee Dunn. Should have been a sack, and instead it's a touchdown. So after the timeout, Auburn will still go for the two, trying to make it a 30 to 15 game with 122 to go third and quarter. And this would certainly put them back in it, down by only two touchdowns. Nix will go to the shotgun, but remember Davis is in the backfield instead of Moore. Now they've got the trip right. Gaucher is to the left. Throw to the end zone. It's intercepted. Then the ball comes loose, and because it's outside of the goal line, the point doesn't count. It was picked off by Nunnerly, who didn't realize for a moment that he could do something with it if he wanted to. And go back the other way and score on an extra point. So it's 30 to 13, and now Auburn is back to the point where they need three scores. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Well, Mike, McDonald's breakaway to the Nevada UNLV game. This, uh, one of the nastiest series, got very ugly. Final play of the game, Mike Maxwell's seventh touchdown pass against UNLV and watch at the end of the game Quincy Sanders for UNLV throws his helmet at Nevada coach Chris Halt. An ugly finish, Chris Halt I should say, ugly finish for this game won by Nevada. Mike? Big rivalry there Mike. Chris Halt was the head coach at uh, Nevada and then he moved up to AD and he hired his assistant Jeff Horton and he left for Nevada Las Vegas so I don't think there's a lot of good, uh, good feelings there. Apparently not. Uh, ESPN's Emmy Award-winning program, Outside the Lines, will celebrate its fifth anniversary with a special low. We hope a uh, special show. We hope to join host Bob Lee to update past shows some of the most significant issues in sports: steroids, sex, and sports boxing, money issues, and much, much more. That's Tuesday night at 7:30 p.m. Bob Lee has done a brilliant job with that Outside the Lines series, and we invite you to watch that special. Kick off taken at the goal line by Nichols. Nichols shy of the 20-yard line. Marcellus Mostella down on special teams to make the tackle. If, if you're Arkansas, 
what do you want to do on offense you, here? You still got to play wide open because Dan Danny Ford and Rocky felt that the offensive coordinator know they can't get conservative because they could lose the momentum they have. They still got to throw the ball. And when you've got a quarterback like Barry London who doesn't make a lot of mistakes, I mean, you're, a lot, you're, you're able to stay wide open in this ball game. You want Madre Hill to run the ball and eat up some clock, but you can't get conservative. Too much time. Three wide receivers. And now running as the play clock is down to four is going to call a timeout for Arkansas. That will be the Hogs' second of this half, so both teams have only one left. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday at 12.30. Illinois and Iowa collide. Then at 7, Texas Tech against Texas. And you can catch all the action on College Game Day and the scoreboard shows. 1.15 to go here, third quarter. Arkansas, which has dominated this game, has watched Auburn cut into its lead here in the second half. Can you run with sidelines and it drives you crazy to use timeouts during a game like this? Yeah, you want to save your time. They're like gold. You, know, you want them at the end. Uh, and you don't want to use them. But you, when you've got a smart quarterback and he's a senior, he, he doesn't want to take the five-yard delay penalty. The, the call got in too late and he was checking off and he just didn't have time. Sometimes don't you think the timeout is worth taking the five-yard penalty, though? I don't like to do that. I, I, want to, I want to be first and 10. I don't want to be first and 15 in any situation. But they're cold. Timeouts. <laughs> Madre Hill, who had that huge first half and has gone over 1,000 yards. The first Arkansas runner since James Rouse back in 87 to break the 1,000-yard barrier. Four-yard gain. Second Picked up four on that carry. Jimmy Thrumball made the tackle assisted by Nikita. And there's only 49 seconds to go here in the period. The way teams throw the football right now, offenses, I believe, are ahead of the defense. The way you throw the football, the way Auburn can throw it, 17 points is not uh, out of reach. And Arkansas certainly hasn't done much offensively here in the second half. Running on the option to Hill, the quick pitch. Madre Hill, first down and more out to the 36-yard line. Cotto Cotton gave him a block down field, a gain of 14 for Madre Hill. And I think that's a checkoff right from the start of the play. When Barry Lunny sees the defense that he likes there, he's going to run the option to the three-receiver side. And you see there's no run support. They're not able to get anybody up in the face of Madre Hill. So the, the blocking angles by the wide receiver, you see Cotto Cotton, number 13, make a big block there, but there's no one up there to force that play. And what a night for Hill. 31 carries, 157 yards. They won't laugh at him much more. No, sir. He says I get a chance to win the Heisman. People better pay attention. Here he goes again. Give him another eight yards, 165 for the night. And Arkansas grinding it out on this drive, the end of the quarter, 30-13 Hawks. Plymouth Neon Coupe, with a zippy 2-liter 16-valve engine. A five-speed tranny and 132 wild ponies. It's a pretty hot little number. Plymouth Neon Coupe, just $99.95. Get a great neon lease price right here, right now. Pop into your Plymouth dealer today. It's a blast from the past. All your favorite arcade games like Astro. Centipede, Defender, and Gallagher. So polish up your old moves. You'll need them to survive the arcade classics. Now available in two-in-one game packs for Game Boy and Super Game Boy, baby. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. Mm. Oh, doesn't have to be. And now the starting line.
Carolina. Whoa. That groom from Texas, Billy Clyde Humphrey. And it's Bride, a 5'6 debutante from Alabama, Nell Peterson. The Humphrey wedding brought to you by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. The vows are up. I do. I do. And they're good. Whoa, Nelly. That was beautiful, man. So MCI's friends and family comes to me and says, we have really big news. I said, great, let me tell it. They said, well, we got something a little bigger in mind. Friends and family, automatic savings, every call. Even bigger savings for one and all. Don't need names, don't need lists. Savings automatic, get a gist. Look, the whole naming thing, you don't need it. You get friends and family, you get savings. Simple. Friends and family. <laughs> Even at 101 years of age, we here at Kelly Springfield like to keep active. Although occasionally, we have to stop and catch a breath. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. Arkansas with the lead 30 to 13 as we go to the fourth quarter. The last time a team beat Auburn and Alabama in the same year, the Gators, four years ago. But right now, Danny Ford and his quarterback, Barry Lunny, are at the point where they can duplicate that feat. And that uh, would be particularly uh, exciting for Danny since he's a native of the state of Alabama. And played and coach at Alabama. And it would give Arkansas a big jump on the inside track to go to the SEC championship team. Madre Hill, and coming up from safety in a hurry, Martavius Houston to make the tackle. Auburn blitzed Martavius Houston out of the secondary on that play, got an extra player against the run. He has had eight tackles tonight. Talk about speed. This kid was the 200-meter champion in the state of Florida. Two freshmen. Hill dies very close to a first down. It depends on the spot. Anthony Harris made the tackle. If they give him his forward progress, it looks like he has it. And it is the first down. Let's go to Mike Adamley, Mike. Well, I've got a kindred spirit here, one of the great quarterbacks in Arkansas history who works as a sideline reporter for Arkansas Razorback Sports Network, Joe Ferguson. And, Joe, I know you're greatly impressed with Barry Lunny. Well, Barry's been a, a great quarterback through his, through his four years at Arkansas. This year has been a great year for him. He's played extremely intelligent football, putting Arkansas in the right play, throwing the football where it's supposed to be thrown. You know, I know you've had a chance to talk to him. He enjoys your counsel that you give him. What are the things you like best about Barry? Well, I like his, his sharpness mentally. I like his accuracy throwing the football. Doesn't have a great overpowering arm, but when he throws it, it's on the money where it's supposed to be. Surprised at the count tonight, 30-13 at this point? I think there's, if there's anybody in the stadium that's not surprised, I'd be I'd like to meet him. Joe, back to the job and keep your fingers crossed. Okay. All right, thanks, Mike. Joe Ferguson had a great career in the pros, didn't he? He's an outstanding quarterback. Now, he's going to turn around and interview Mike uh, Adamley, not for the <laughs> That's radio. Right. That's right. <laughs> this guy's trying to save a guess is what they're doing. 35 carries tonight for the Madre Hill. Lenny under pressure. Spent a lot of time and will lose about five. That is the sixth sack for Auburn, but they have come at times where they haven't hurt Arkansas. And you, again, I, I just want to emphasize the fact that Arkansas doesn't make mistakes. Barry Lunny did not put the ball up for grabs. He took the sack, now he'll try to get the first down. He's just not going to throw the ball to the other jersey. He had three or four chances on that scramble to unload it, but he couldn't find the guy he wanted, so he ate the football. Third and 14. The Arkansas offensive line has done a heck of a job tonight. Lunny quarterback draw, not this time. Wrapped up and dropped by Jimmy Brumbaugh, who was the true freshman 
can be a heck of a player in his career. See, the fans are mumbling a little bit here, but I think that was a good call. You try to run the quarterback draw and see if you can pick up something close. You may break it, but you're punting the ball and you're playing pretty good defense right now. Make Auburn use some clock and go the distance. And the clock is running. 12.08 to go in the game. Wait to punt to Baker, who has had no luck tonight. Special teams for Auburn have been sensational. Returnable kick if you can get up there. And you hear the helmet cracking at the 33-yard line as Baker gets back after a 33-yard punt and an 8-yard return. Back to Little Rock in a moment. State Farm presents the rules of the game. Let's talk about the opportunity to catch a kick. In this play, the kicker is next to the receiver. A flag is thrown. Why? Mike Klein's been my State Farm agent for nine years, and he's been a coach in the community for three. He's as dedicated to those kids as he is to his policyholders. The most important thing that I can do right now in my life is to protect my family in the future. The way he handles my life insurance shows it's important to him, too. My other friends who have State Farm life insurance say the same thing about their agents. You know, I think there is something to this good neighbor business. State Farm is there. We're talking about the opportunity to catch a kick. In this play, we have a foul. By rule, the kicking team must be at least six feet from the receiver when he catches the ball. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus, where every curve flows into an ingenious new design, where one-of-a-kind ideas unfold, where everything you touch is soft on your fingertips. And even the back seat shows forward thinking. The all-new Ford Taurus. Making the dream come true. ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by the all-new Ford Taurus. A look you've never seen from a name you know well. Three coaches spanning four decades of Razorback football. Collectively, 259 wins, some pretty good ones there. Frank Royals, Lou Holtz, Ken Hatfield. 259 career wins. You know, one of the great things about being in this business with ESPN is you get to meet a lot of people. And you look at a list of great coaches like that. We've met all of them. Isn't that nice? A lot of fun. Met Mike Godfrey when he was a coach. Patrick Nix back to work. Goes to the sideline to Eric Lowe. Another true freshman. Speed galore on the outside now in this recruiting class. Giving them all short passes, just coming up, making the tackle, and just making them earn their yardage. They don't, Arkansas doesn't want to give them anything up big. Nick with a sprint out to avoid the rush and throws. Short hop that one in for Robert Baker. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Michael? Mike, a final from the Rose Bowl, another 200-yard game for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the UCLA back 50 yards here, 33 carries, 217 yards. For the first time in six tries, the Bruins beat the Bears, UCLA in a three-way tie for third, three and two in the Pac-10. Every time I hear the young man's name, I think it's a flashback, and they're playing the wrong sport. Nix airs one out for Baker, he's out there and has it near the 32. Cantlope on the coverage, but Baker with a great sight adjustment on the ball. Hit those short passes all night. You see Danny Ford's expression. He looks at that clock. You don't want to give up big plays right now. Tracy Cantlope, number 21, is going to be beaten by Robert Baker. Just a fade route. Well thrown by Patrick Nix over the shoulder. Big game for Auburn. The Tigers trying to get an offensive surge during the second half and get back in it. Four-man rush. Nix unloads just before he hit and got it complete to Goodson. Billy Anderson, the big right tackle, number 71, pass protection. He's 6'6", 317, out of Mobile, Alabama. An outstanding offensive tackle. It's a nice throw by Nix under pressure. 
There's Willie right there. He's mammoth. He's going to be an All-American for Auburn. Gain of eight, second and two. Draw play. Davis, first down and more. See more officials get knocked down this year and end up in pass patterns. <laughs> it's usually the umpire. Because they're, they're really concentrating on the offensive line play and they get caught up in there sometimes. Why you don't see too many 65-year-old umpires, do you? No. Another first down for Auburn. Four-man rush. Nix with time to the end zone. Touchdown, Goodson. Wide open. Two big plays in this drive, and they didn't use a lot of clock. And they're back in this thing. One of the hardest things for a team to do is to get a big lead and then maintain the momentum. We go back to the Ohio State game this afternoon. Well, they're going to go for one here now to make it a 10-point ball game. Two scores away. But again, Arkansas can't get conservative on offense. Matt Hawkins for the point after. And the margin is now 10 with 10.36 to go in the game. Patrick Nix trying to bring the Tigers back. It's 30-20 Arkansas. There's a place in the Big Apple where New Yorkers rush to be on the cutting edge. It's Jean-Louis David. A touch of Paris right in the middle of Manhattan. So if you're looking for a new you, drop in anytime at any of their locations. You don't need an appointment, just your visa card. Because when it comes to your hair on Jean-Louis David, American Express just won't cut it. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus. For those who want to have it all and take it all with them. For those who have an eye for design and a passion for performance. And for those who want the latest in safety, including standard dual airbags and available anti-lock brakes. The all-new Ford Taurus Wagon. For those whose dreams are a little bigger. Making the dream come true. My mom and dad are buying a home. So I get my own room all to myself. Mom says after we move in, I can fix mine up any way I want. And if my sister wants to bug me or something, she'll have to knock first. There you are. Come on, let's go. At Fannie Mae, we're the nation's largest source of funds for mortgage lenders. Call us for a free guide to help you find the mortgage that's right for you. The top-ranked Seminoles take their national championship quest to Charlottesville. Florida State versus Virginia, Thursday at 8, only on ESPN. Ow. Concern on the Arkansas sideline as they have seen their lead cut to 10. The difference has been the performance of Patrick Nix for Auburn. First half, he was 8 out of 14, only 84 yards in the second half, 215 yards on 18 of 25, and a touchdown. And Terry Baden hopes he can keep it up right now. He's got a count on his defense to get the ball back in the hurry. Gentle will kick to Nichols and Marius Johnson, who waited for three. toward the sideline, taken by Nichols. And room up the middle. Nichols to the 35-yard line. Charles Rose had to make the tackle there. Mike, when Auburn goes back and looks at these tapes tomorrow, special teams has been such a big difference in this football game. Arkansas has won every phase of the special teams up to this point with 10-28 in the fourth quarter. They have been terrific, especially on coverage. Lunny brings them out with 10.28 to go in the game. Madre Hill pounds ahead up to the 38-yard line. Shannon Suttle with the tackle. Auburn needs to cause a turnover against the ball club. It doesn't make many mistakes.
There's Barry Sr. and Becky Lunny watching their son, who is finally in an offense that suits his talents here at Arkansas. And they must be loving this season. Lunny with a short step, goes back to Metters, and Metters dives to the sticks. It looks like he's going to be about a yard shy. Daryl McGee with the tackle again. Barry's a high school coach, and Danny Ford said last night he's never really called, and uh, he understands the coaching business. He just let Barry get in this system, and, and whatever was going to happen was going to happen. He's been very supportive of Danny Ford. Maybe Madre Hill time here on third and one, and that young man is going to be first in line for the Whirlpool. 36 carries, 170 yards. There are the numbers on one. And Madre Hill lowers the head and powers right at the sticks. I don't think he made this, Mike. What do you think? I think he got it. All right. I've been wrong every time against you, but I don't think he made it this time. I was two for two on Thursday night, so we'll, we'll try to make it three in a row. Good search by the Auburn defense on that play. I, think I got a feeling you'll be two for three. <laughs> It was not the best mark in the world, was Hey, it? it's all part of it. The batting <laughs> average has gone down. Yeah, that's okay. Uh-oh. Three for three. You're not supposed to portal before the decision. No, made. I didn't think he made it, though. Plus, you got it. You're right. Auburn got a pretty good spot. So, a fresh set of downs for Arkansas. The clock running. We're now inside nine minutes. And Shannon Sidney checks in for the Razorbacks at a wide receiver spot. Arkansas will work that clock. Baker and Herring are in as tight ends. And Madre Hill, the single setback. Hill gets the kill, maybe a yard. And Lunny, smart quarterback that he is, is using everything he can off the play clock. Mike, I want to go back to what you said earlier when you were talking about timeouts. And you're getting in this kind of ball game where you're 10 behind and you really only have one timeout to stop that clock. Auburn has one timeout left, and so does Arkansas. But Auburn had to spend a couple timeouts early in this half, and it may come back to hurt them. Terry Bowden knows he needs a turnover in the worst way, right here. His team's responded in the second half. They Have came out, played a different ball game. Look at Lonnie, takes it all the way down to one before the snap, and Madre Hill gets five more into Auburn territory. And the dream for the Cleveland Indians is over. The Atlanta Braves have beaten them one to nothing in the World Series. If you're joining us at the end of that game, hope you enjoyed the series. You missed a good one here, Arkansas dominated early, but Auburn has come back to cut the lead to 10 with 7.31 left to go in the game. Third and five for Arkansas. Auburn stacking the line. Madre Hill on the pitch, nobody out there. Hill set the first down to the Auburn 41. Brumbaugh made the tackle, but he ran through an arm tackle by Martavius Houston and got the first down. Well, what hurts the blitz when you do blitz a team like Arkansas, they have the ability to run the option. And when you blitz, they're going to blitz both linebackers from the outside, but Lunny's going to get the pitch off to Madre Hill. And when you're in man coverage, it's hard to come up. And the linebacker who blitzes on the side you're not running to is just run himself right out of the play. He's out of the play and uh, a wrong guess on his side. You saw Martavius Houston, the defensive back, try to come up and make the tackle, but Montre Hill had the first down. Arkansas just beating the clock to death right now. Madre Hill. Jack straight up by Brumbaugh. The 256-pound true freshman nose tackle. You got to give a lot of credit to Danny Ford and his coaches. Uh, Rocky Felker, the offensive coordinator. You look at the turnovers tonight, the storyline. And Lunny, big night, 16 out of 23, two touchdowns. Arkansas has been held to 92 yards in the second half. 
but they did the damage in the first half. Good game plans by Arkansas tonight. Special teams, offense, and defense carried out by the ball club. 6-0-3 left in the game, second and 10. Option, Madre Hill. A good looking running back. Short of the 40 yard line. As they're laying in wait for him now, Anthony Harris. Third down and nine at the 40. Madre Hill, 42 carries tonight. He's made an impression tonight on that Auburn defense. And you're right. Barry Lunny just using the time on the clock. Andre Hill, 42 rushes, averaged 4.4 yards. I'm going to wear out that set of shoulder pads tonight. That is a school record for Terry. 42 times in the game. He's not done yet. Lunny, throws complete. Barry Lunny with a great job to Eubanks, who's had a huge night as a wide receiver. And Auburn gets him in third and ten, and Barry Lunny comes back, and then the frustration you see on Terry Bowden's face, because you get him in that kind of situation, and then Barry Lunny hits Anthony Eubanks for the first down, and a new set of downs, and that clock, 504, will start moving. That may have been the last nail in the coffin. Under five minutes to go now. And Arkansas celebrating a chance to have a huge leg up on going to the SEC championship game. Eubanks now eight catches, 108 yards, and a touchdown. And Madre Hill will have a chance to add to his school record for carry. That's 43. He may have reached the point where he thinks, hey, this is enough, isn't well, it? This is a phase of the game where you really work on it because you're all really running the football against nine and ten man defenses because they know you're going to run the ball and you're going to kill the clock. So you want to hold on to the football. You still want to pick up the first down. So you work against this. Even though you're a man or two short against the run, you need to break some tackles and keep that clock moving. And Auburn, of course, having only the one timeout after spending them early. Second and ten. Hill cuts it outside, dives to the 26-yard line. Martavius Houston makes the tackle. Another big block by Earl Scott, the center of that outstanding Arkansas offensive line. They have had a big night, and Arkansas has run the ball tonight 60 times against Auburn. The control, usually a team that runs the football, controls the game. Arkansas controlled it from the start. The one thing that impresses me the most about Madre Hill, here's a guy with 4-3 speed, but he has moves, he's in control, he's not just a speed guy. And tough. Yes. Third and eight, and Lunning sees the play clock run down, and he will use his last timeout. We've got 3.11 to go in the game. Arkansas in control, 30-20. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and I'm here to show you. Day. Especially when my health is concerned, I like to go who to, to who I trust. And other insurances, they tell you what you can and can't do, or who you can and can't see. I don't like that. I like the freedom to choose what I want to. And I like Blue Cross Blue Shield because they give me that freedom to do that. <laughs> You're invited to discover the newly expanded True Test paint store at Uncle Bob's True Value Hardware. James Stallworth, with 20 years of paint experience, helps guarantee customer satisfaction. James loves to help you, and he offers free custom color tinning and perfect matches using the latest technology with his color analyzer computer. And James can save you time and money on your next painting project. Paint Help is spoken at Uncle Bob's in downtown Andalusia. Come see us for all your paint needs. A trip to Super Bowl 30 in the ESPN Football Fanatic Sweepstakes, sponsored by Visa, the official card of the NFL. Call in to answer a question during these ESPN Sunday Night NFL games or enter on ESPN Net Sports Zone. Yeah, could be a pretty good game. 
Coming up on SportsCenter, the Braves try to clinch. The Huskers and Buffs butt heads in the Big H big battle. And Cigar races toward history at the Breeders' Cup. With Craig Kilborn, Jack Edwards, SportsCenter, 11 Eastern. Mike Patrick, Mike Godfrey, Mike Adamley with you. Mike's are wild tonight, I guess. 3-11 to go from Little Rock and Arkansas on the verge of a huge win. Danny Ford's resurgence with this program. To the first team in four years to beat Auburn and Alabama in the same season in the Southeastern Conference. Florida did it last. Third and eight. Keep it on the ground, work on the clock, not make a mistake. And now Auburn is going to use its last timeout with 3.04 to go. Scott Stacy made the last tackle. We've got a timeout on the field, 3.04 left. Back in a moment. My daughter used to think fish just came from the supermarket. You know, my son used to wait for rainbows, but now we go looking for them. I know they learn all about the world in school, but now we can show it to them. Isn't it amazing how opening one door can open up so many others? Ford Explorer, because the world's too big to be left unexplored. Look what Daddy can juggle with his Nokia cellular phone, a rubber duck and a teddy bear, a Nokia cellular phone, a rubber duck, and a teddy bear. And with my Nokia cellular phone, I can juggle something even more amazing. My schedule. One-touch dialing makes a Nokia cellular phone easy to use. Hello? Amazing. Nokia cellular phones. Wrangler jeans. Available in the two colors boys prefer most. Black and blue. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Arkansas leading by 10, facing a fourth and nine, will set up Lotteret for a 44-yard field goal, which would match his career high that he kicked earlier in this game. If I'm an Arkansas fan, I'm a little scared by this call, the possibility of a blocked field goal. Yeah, you're in the latter part of the season. You shouldn't have a block here. You have confidence in your special teams. And they've been brilliant all night long. Lotteret wide on this one. So Auburn will take over with 2.58 to go in the game. They're out of timeouts. And they need two scores. Two minutes to go. ESPN is your home for college football on Thursday at 8. Warwick Dunn and Florida State against ACC rival Virginia. But start your weekend right at 7.30 with a weekend kickoff show. Auburn needs to score in a hurry. Nick's under pressure. He's sacked. Junior Soley gets the first Arkansas sack of the game. That's his fifth of the year. He's an outstanding defensive lineman. Really, he visited Auburn, and Shannon Robeek, the center who's blocking against him, was the one who showed him around the Auburn campus. The good pressure by Junior Soley to make the sack against Leonard Thomas, the left guard. Second and 14. Here comes Soley again. Nick nearly had it intercepted. Right in the hands of Philip Hayes, who got one early. And now Auburn down to third and 14. The advantage of the college game, if you get a first down, the clock will stop to move the chain. Acts like a timeout yeah. for you, so you do have time. 2.26 on the clock. Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator. He's rolling sevens tonight with his call. 
Arkansas with a chance to go to six and two, five and one in the SEC. And get into the top 25. They're just outside of it right now. Nixon trouble throws as he goes down. And that was, he was taken down by Connolly, but Geno Bell got him by the ankle. Terry Baum's got to go for this. Fourth down call. Patrick Nix has to keep these chains going. Last chance for the Auburn Tigers. And the Arkansas fans, most of whom are still here, on their feet for their defense. And they've been a factor in this ballgame from the first kickoff play where the fumble was caused by the Arkansas special team. This crowd has been with this football team all night. Fourth and 14. Nicks will get the first down. Gauthier makes the catch up at the 42. And Gray Gauthier's had some game. He has had, I think that's his 14th catch tonight, but great protection. Brock stops while they move the chains. A gain of 19. Nix has hit some big plays when he's had to. Still has several in front of him, though. The pattern deep over the middle has been open. Goes to the middle again, and this time it's behind Tyrone Goodson. That was against heavy coverage there by Arkansas. They were dropping uh, seven people on that play. See Joe Kynes again, Danny Ford sweating this last few minutes out. He knows what a big win this would be for his program here. He made the next step to the next level. Nick's out of the shotgun, pressure from behind. Boche takes the short toss, gets it up to midfield, a couple of yards shy of a first down, clock runs under two minutes. will have the first down, covers up the ball, gets down to the 36-yard line. That'll stop the clock. Can't load and none of combine on the tackle. Good call, Mike, because it stops the clock right. with the first down. Now you get set at the line of scrimmage and ready to go again with 131. Certainly no quit in the Auburn Tigers. And here's a good play by Ryan Hale. He just moved the football. And all Shannon Robeek can do is point at the umpire and say, hey, he took the football. <laughs> what is this? Tried to time it up with the snap to slap the ball away. Nick throws it out in the flat, complete not much. Robert Baker wrapped up by Smith and Hayes. What you'd like Robert Baker to do on that is spin to the outside and try to get outside to use the time to get out of bounds, stop that clock. Down to 105. Nick's under pressure, throws. Complete at the sideline, inbounds, but it will be a first down to stop the clock. Gaucher with another catch at the 24-yard line. Gino Bell applying the pressure. You're on that sideline. This game's never over till it's over. 16 catches, 200, two yards for Gaucher. School record for Auburn. They need to get into the end zone right now. Nick's over the middle. It's complete to low, low down to the 10. It's another first down. We'll stop the clock with 44 seconds to go. Remember, you need two scores. You can't use it all on trying to get the first. <laughs> Defensive line, the Arkansas tired chasing Patrick Nix. We're getting some new defensive line of Ken Anderson, number 87 in the game. Nick throws to the corner. It's complete down at the two-yard line to Baker. That's a good catch by the freshman Robert Baker on the sideline. And a very good throw. Patrick Nix had an outstanding second half. Second down, and Nix will kill the clock with 21 seconds to go. Oh, 
are Visa players of the game. Willie Gaucher, 16 catches, a school record for 204 yards. What a performance. And for Arkansas, Madre Hill, he's got a school record. 45 carries, 186 yards in the touchdown. And Nix has the school record. 32 completions in this game. Make it 33 and a touchdown to Lowe. Mike, here's going to be an interesting call because you got to go for two here because if you get the two, then the onside kick, you can still win this for the field goal. Because if you don't go for two, the field goal only gets you a tie and that doesn't do Auburn any good. It doesn't help them in this playoff race. They would still be a full game behind Arkansas and have no tiebreaker advantage. So they will set up to go for two with 18 seconds left. This would make it a two-point game, set up an onside kick throw. If they don't get this, they would need a touchdown to win. Nick's in the flat, low, they got the two. 30 to 28, and the Auburn Tigers just pouring their way back into this thing. Well, now you got to get the onside kick. Terry Bowden, who's coached a, a brilliant game here in the second half, his staff, uh, with a good come from behind effort here now they're in position to win this game and get the onside kick because they really have a pretty good field goal kicker before the ball game we always look at the field goal kickers up here and chart their longest kick matt hawkins before this ball game there's practice kicked a 52 yard field goal mike so he's got a strong leg so if they can recover this onside kick with 18 seconds to go, still life in them third Tigers. His career high in a game is 47, but as you pointed out, Mike, he was much longer than that in practice. At one time, this game was 27-0 Arkansas, and it's 30-28 to as Auburn just fights back in. And keep in mind that Arkansas's special teams have been nearly perfect tonight. They only have to do it one more time. Hawkins will kick off. Got the hand team in there, 10 yards away from the ball. Let's go, Horn! Get this one! Well, the last place you want to be is the receiving team in this corner. No, I'll tell you what, you want to be in that. They want, <laughs> make, they want to make the play that saves this game. Those are all guys with supposedly great hands. Kickers like to look for that second bounce. Went 10 yards, and Auburn has the football. Auburn recovers the onside kick. Marcellus Mostella on the sideline makes the recovery. Are you kidding me? The one mistake that they make in special teams tonight, they didn't really make an effort to go for the ball because they didn't think it was going to go 10 yards. And this kick by Matt Hawkins, it doesn't look like it's going to go 10 yards, and I think that's what Arkansas thought. And then all of a sudden, as it got thrown a little further, you see them let the go, it just went right to Marcellus Mostella. A big mistake by the special teams of Arkansas. A 25-yard completion would give them a shot at a field goal. Nick. Gaucher in a jump ball situation can't get it, and there's 10 seconds left. Conley was putting the pressure on. Remember, with the college situation, even though they don't have a timeout, if they get the big completion, they can run up and still spike the ball because the clock stops to move the chains. And then they could bring in the field goal team. You figure they're going to go to Willie Gaucher. He's been a go-to guy all night. Nick's over the middle, Gaucher makes the catch at the 35. It's a first down with three seconds to go. Now they've got to spike the ball and then try what would be a 52-yarder. They're going right to the field goal. As soon as they put this play ball in play, they'll kick this field goal. You practice this, you run your kicking team on. As soon as they blow that whistle, that ball should be snapped. Matt Hawkins to try a career-long 52-yarder to win the game. It's short.
and you see the look on Danny Ford's face. That's why a lot of people get out of coaching. He had a huge lead and nearly saw his team lose on the last play. Terry Bowden knew he had a chance after a great comeback, but Hawkins can't deliver from 52. Looked like they rushed the snap a little bit and didn't really get a clean hold on that play. Unbelievable comeback for Auburn, but what a huge win for the Razorbacks of Arkansas. The Hogs are back. That's the end of the game. Our final score, Arkansas 30, Auburn 28. For Mike Gottfried, Mike Adamley, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. So long from Little Rock. The Residence College and Football Scoreboard Show is next. Now let's join Mike Tarika. All right, Mike, Mike, and Mike. Thank you. Breathtaking end to the college football.